Earlier, while I was keeping guard for Kemi outside Dr. Boniface's office, out of nowhere, economics lecturer Dr. Samuel Oladipo, thinking I was a student, called me over to him, pulled me by my hands to his office, and pressured me to give him my phone number. It's the perfect example of the kind of everyday harassment that students face in Unilag. Later, I told Dr. Oladipo I was a student who wanted to switch to his economics course. Good afternoon. Fine, thank you. He invited me to his office three times for tutorials. He was consistently inappropriate with me. It was clear he was more interested in seducing me than helping me with my academics. <laughs> I mean, how to... Hey. <laughs> At one point, he leaned in really close to me. This is the constant. I could see from his eye line, he was, you know, looking right here, like, leering at my breasts. Should I hold on to this or I should just look at the name around? I tried to talk about education, but then he reached out and started touching and stroking my hand. What is this? It's drip. Drip mark. Where? Since one time I had malaria, they had to check injection in my hand. Painful? Yes, very painful. He repeatedly asked me to the senior staff club. At the end of our third office meeting, I decided to go. He seemed eager to enter. Once inside, he took me to what I later learned was the so-called cold room. This is the place where Dr. Boniface Igbene, who says, lecturers take students there to grope them and I'm being walked into this room with Dr. Oladipo. Good evening, friends. Thank you. Good evening. How are you? I think you. Hey. 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 The atmosphere is weird. The windows are blacked out. The disco lights. Women are offered alcohol. You look around, you don't see any male students, just girls right there in the senior staff club. Were these women students? I'm sitting down on my own, trying to avoid everyone, and they keep, you know, telling me to dance, you know, trying to pull me to dance, come out and dance. And this other senior lecturer, a really older man, comes and grabs my arm and tries to, like, literally lift me up to dance. No, I do, I do. And I'm telling everyone, I, I don't want to dance. I just want to sit. I went to find a quiet corner. Dr. Ladikbo joined me. I wanted to get I knew, according to the university's own rules, that a lecturer who is giving a student academic help, helping her transfer courses, should not be going out on dates with her. Because, I mean, it's, there is a conflict of interest there. So I asked him about it. I tested him. I wanted to know if he knew the rules. I don't know what, I don't know if it's right for a lecturer and a student to, like, I don't know, very casual. I don't know. <laughs> the person who lectures. You are both tomorrow, right? Yes. Are they hard ones? No, children. We are adults. Misleading me about the rules, trying to make it look like it's okay for a lecturer to date a student. When I told him I was ready to go, he was reluctant. As I was walking down the stairs, he reached around my waist from behind and touched my breast. It's like I'm in this space all over again where I don't have control. How 
nobody even allowed to do this nonsense. And I'm, I'm not the only one that goes through this. It's everybody. <laughs> like a rite of passage. <sighs> this is what female students have to go through. Dr. Oladipo sent us this response. Dr. Oladipo claims it was Kiki who greeted him first and says she claimed to know him. He admits he held her by the hand as she moved to his office. He says he never tried to seduce her for sexual activities and it was a coincidence he took her to the so-called cold room. Visiting it, he claims, for the first time to attend a birthday party. He denies trying to touch her breast, saying he tried to hold her hand instead.